Welcome to RISE from Lausanne, Switzerland, where the governmental authorities just announced some relaxed standards allowing 10 people rather than five to gather, but only if they're from the same family and only as of December 18th. I am Professor Damien Hodari of EHL Lausanne. And from lovely London, a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. As always, it's Anita Menderata, Special Advisor to the Secretary General of the UNWTO, alongside Damien for Rise in Practice. We are so excited to have you here. We have a really fun one this week. Rise in Practice this week is all about living online, and we have two great speakers. Why are we doing this? I'm going to let Damien answer that. But who are our speakers? We've got two great people. We have Sue Carter, who is from the recruitment firm Arlington Recruitment, who works directly with people in terms of finding the right people for the right roles. And I thank her because she found me two of my fantastic Wizards of Oz. And we have Chantelle de Carvalho, who is the director of Coco and Claude Films Limited and is very much on the production side, looking for people to put on screen and therefore knowing exactly what's required when it comes to the auditions. So, Professor Hadari, you're live, go for it. So I, I, I thought this was an important topic and Anita and I talked a lot about it. It's not really a hospitality themed issue, but really we're all living online so much now. And I keep getting questions from students about how they should prepare for job interviews now that they're online rather than in person. But also, I've noticed in class, some of the students not understanding how to be positioned in front of the camera or their lighting or their background, as well as how to speak. And we've got some really interesting tips from the two women that are joining us today, because I think this is such a new experience for so many of us spending not just time online, but so much time online, we may as well do it right. So personally, I know I have a lot to learn still, and I'm looking forward to see what they have to say. Shall we do it, Anita? That's not what you told us when we had a production meeting. You said you wanted to know if you were doing your makeup right. Oh, yes. Why is your forehead so shiny every time you do an evening broadcast? So I won't tell anyone, Damien. We'll keep that as our secret. But Sue and Chantel, action. Over to you. Presentation is really, really important, um, <clears throat> whether it be how you dress or, or the environment around you. You get one opportunity to sell yourself to an employer. And I think another key thing, when you're having an interview, adopt the same approach, whether you're being interviewed by a recruiter or whether you're being interviewed by a potential employer. Because if it's a recruiter, they are making the same judgments on you with regards to whether or not they're going to present your CV to the client. So it's really important to treat a recruiter interview just the same as you would if you were going directly to a, to a client. In terms of dress, yes, business dress. Nine times out of 10, that would be my recommendation. Obviously, it depends on the industry sector that you're interviewing for sometimes you know the design sector they're a bit more casual a bit more edgy a bit more trendy so it may be a case that it's literally just smart casual but think about what you're going to to wear how you're going to present yourself so generally suited and booted or business dress in terms of makeup always for me less is more you know no false eyelashes, no huge sort of talon nails with really strong colours. Everything should be reasonably neutral, as plain as possible. But in terms of makeup, less is definitely more. I just consider what do I do when I'm in a real life situation and face to face with somebody. Um, in, in my industry, appearance is actually key and how you appear and, and how you present yourself in real life is, is very key to how somebody takes you seriously. And as a female in the film industry, it's a little bit difficult as well. You know, you have to tread a line very carefully. So when, again, on Zoom, I, um, I normally wear makeup. I normally do my hair. I love jewelry and I, I love clothing. I love expressing myself through my clothing. So. I do all of the same things I normally do. In fact, when you're using Zoom in more of a, uh, a team situation where you're having a team meeting or a weekly catch up meeting or whatever, we all joke about it. We wear, we wear our top and underneath I'm wearing my trackies. 
um, and you know it's all about here up and nobody cares about the rest of it but I tend to look at getting dressed for a pitch meeting or, or an interview if you like I have dressed exactly as I would when I go out down to the shoes because it gives you that little extra pop of confidence that um, you look as good as you can look but when you're on a small camera situation the same rules apply when you're you're having to get someone to interview on a broadcast camera um, you can't really wear such sort of zigzag patterns um, and, and nothing too busy nothing too distracting light light white colors are a bit difficult because they reflect the light in a certain way dark colors on camera on a zoom are absolutely dire a, a, a dark black um, and if you've got a darker background which some of us unfortunately have to have you might look like the old floating head in a um, you know, in a space situation. And so you have to be quite careful of that. If you're going to go for dark colors, like, you know, this is my sort of medium. This is the the blue um, and, it, and it's, it's dark and it's muted, but it's not black. If you're going to wear cream or what have you, then, then you know, wear something contrasting over it. If it's just a, a jumper or, or, a, or if you've got a, a nice linen jacket, wear it over as well. Jewelry, you're presenting your character as well. Um, so if you, that person that wears big, hefty jewelry, do so, but you know, like I've tried to sort of pare it down a little bit here. And uh, glasses, it's a difficult thing. I have to wear my spectacles for, you know, when I'm this close on, on the camera. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's a difficult thing. If you don't have to wear them, then, then I always say, try not to wear them. Makeup, obviously just don't completely overdo it, um, but be aware that um, you will normally have a front light. Front light is the best light for presenting on a Zoom. So be aware of that and it can kind of really wash you out and um, take away the shadows and dips in your face. So just try and put some sort of contrast and, and uh, uh, shadow um, on so whether it's just bronzer on your cheeks or bronzer on you know on your eyelids but just be aware that you can look quite washed out with a front line for men well you know make sure you've just taken a tissue and sort of blotted yourself down a little bit exactly as we would in a broadcast interview situation we sort of blot the men down and might just put a little bit of powder on them but I don't think men have to go to that extent when they're sitting on Zoom. Dress as you would, would normally dress, um, just being aware that all you have to present is this little space. If I was to, to, to look back on every Zoom interview or virtual interview that I have, have done, one of the biggest mistakes is the space that people are sitting whether they've, you know, carried it out in their bedroom and the beds are made, it just appears messy, which then has reflection on you as a person. Secondly, I have to say it's dress code again. Maybe that's because we're recruiters. And as I said before, sometimes we haven't, we don't get the same credence as we would if we were an prospective employer. But ultimately, we are because we're representing the clients out there. We're representing the companies. And if we don't feel that that person has made the effort or has presented themselves in the best way, we won't necessarily submit those, the CVs for that very reason. And I think the lastly is probably, you know, very much a case of people don't prepare. So there's always problems with no camera or the audio is not working, or there's poor connectivity, um, you know, you must make sure that is up and running well in advance, you know, whether it be the day before, check it again that morning and check it again just before. Because these, these video interviews, these virtual interviews only work if you've got a camera and the audio, audio element to it. Things that I've noticed, um, so if I've, if I've been interviewing somebody for a position, um, and I've sort of taken little mental notes as I've gone along and things that I know I've done myself, I suppose, is um, so that the primary one for me is forgetting about eye contact, is forgetting that you've got the little pinprick camera there 
and being distracted by oh what's so and so doing down there on the screen oh gosh you know or or then like oh and then seeing yourself and like oh right oh yeah gosh looking fine today aren't I and you kind of get distracted by all those those things on the screen instead of remembering you're in a meeting and you're making eye contact with somebody that is the only way you're going to get your personality across it's the only way you're going to get your excitement across um and for them to take you seriously that your project is that important that you just want to infuse them with the enthusiasm that you have for it don't forget as well in the process of when you're talking about yourself um, and you're talking about your project and um, all of those really important things that that's why you're having this meeting you can just as you do in real life forget about the person you're speaking to and forget about their viewpoint. And um, you're so busy waiting for your next opportunity to say what you've got to say that you might forget they wanted to say something or what they're saying right at that, that moment could be incredibly important. And so just stop for a moment and remember you are in a meeting. Um, it's not a one-way conversation and they, also want to be heard they also want to give you their opinion of your project or of your company or your brand or your concept whatever it is you're selling on your your zoom call so just allow the meeting to breathe and remember there's someone on the other side there who actually wants to be part of that conversation nerves um, sometimes i mean i get nervous every pitch meeting i go into it doesn't matter how confident I am of my project or how excited I am of it. I get nervous every time I have to pitch. And it's the same as when I'm pitching um, in my living room over a camera and, and, you know, for the obvious reasons, a little bit more so. As humans, we're, we're programmed. That's our blueprint, you know, is it, when we get nervous and anxious and the adrenaline starts flowing, it's there for a reason. It's to make us perform better as humans. You know, in the old days, it was you know, fighting the dinosaur, then leaving enough energy to run away from it. In this situation, as that adrenaline builds, your brain is firing much faster and you're able to just sort of give the information you need to give in a very concise, pertinent way. So don't be afraid of your nerves. Um, I've seen people just get become overrun by their nerves, but use them. Just remember they're there for a reason and use them, um, but don't get too carried away, obviously. And, um, and then the other common mistake I've noticed is these days with all the different uh, video protocol conferencing software, they've all got neat little tricks and things and neat little um, elements within the app that you can use. And <clears throat> you can get a bit carried away using them. So just use them sparingly. One is the virtual background. And I have noticed people have used them quite aptly, I, I, I think, in that they're in a tiny little bedsit and they've got a plain wall behind them, um, which, you know, when you've got front light in particular, you get this horrible shadow behind you. And every time you move, you just got the shadow going. So I have noticed that people use a virtual background in that situation. And they use one which is fairly neutral and plain which is a good thing to do but if you're using it just for fun and effect and you know i've seen people keep changing their background as well which is like really just using the the software um for fun rather than just being aware you're still in a meeting obviously with covid that's changed the whole recruitment process and turned it on its head. Throughout the whole of the lockdown, we've been carrying out Zoom interviews, virtual interviews, and they've been really important for us to be able to keep the process flowing. So, you know, from my point of view, I think it's really, really important to be prepared. You know, I think a lot of people don't put um, as much onus on a virtual interview as they would on a face-to-face, -face, but they're exactly the same. They're just a different format. So you must be prepared. You must test your, your technology, make sure everything's working, making sure you have the con connectivity, the audio, just make sure that everything is prepared. And, you know, in terms of the way you present yourself, make sure that 
you, you're dressed accordingly. Again, it is exactly the same as a face-to-face -face interview. So you wouldn't turn up for a face-to-face -face interview not in business dress or dressed accordingly. So that's really, really important. And the other thing is your workspace or your workspace or the place that you're going to conduct this um, this interview. It needs to be uncluttered. You need to think about where you're positioning yourself. Think about things like the lighting, et cetera, et cetera. All of those things will add value to that interview. You have one chance to sell yourself in an interview and it's important to make it count. Mainly what it comes back to is um, how I approach a, a, a meeting in real life and how I approach my brand in real life. I try to be sensible. I try to be sensitive to what um, the you know what's in the room, who's in the room, and um, respectful of that. And so I feel like it's the same thing when you're online it, with social media, for instance. It's the same sort of. Um, sometimes you see people getting onto a social media app, and they sort of just come in with both guns blazing and you know shouting about how good they are and how amazing their brand is etc cetera, etc cetera, instead of sort of easing themselves into a, into a conversation and then slowly sort of bring those those things out um, we don't do that in real life I, i've not noticed anyone in a networking situation um come blazing into a meeting and like bouncing around going like hey i'm new and this is my new brand and i'm like so exciting and like wow listen to me and sort of telling lewd jokes and what have you um, in that situation, so I don't imagine uh, one would do it in an online situation. So in much the same way, when you're doing a one-on-one -on -one Zoom or a one-to-three Zoom, um, I think you need to approach things as sensibly as you would in a real-life situation um, and just be aware that um, you're front and centre and you have to be quite sensitive to what you're being asked, be sensitive to um, what people's needs are and whether you can fulfill those needs or not. I think, again, you know, think about the place that you're going to, to have your, your interview. You know, don't position yourself in the middle of your home with everybody else around, with pets that could start barking or jumping on, on the laptop whilst you're having your, your interview. It's really important to make sure that everybody is aware that when it's going to happen and at what time and not to disturb you. You don't want someone knocking on a door at the same time that you're having an interview. All those, all those little things will be judged against you. you know, lighting is really important, really, really important. You don't want it too light. You don't want it too dark. You don't want it too sunny so that you're squinting. And just try and relax and be yourself. Don't be too scripted in your approach. Um, ultimately, you need to make sure that, again, preparation is key when you're setting up the place that you, you want to have the interview. In order to show that confidence, in order to put across myself and 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 not to be making some of those common mistakes that we make, um, it's very important that I put all those technical things in place beforehand. I put them in place. I make sure my background looks okay. I make sure that I've done my makeup and my hair and I'm dressed okay and I'm feeling good and make sure I've got the right lighting and that my my camera is at the right angle, do all of that. And, you know, there's, there are things to consider with that. They're quite considerable things to consider. But once they're done, forget about them. Forget. It, it, it no longer exists. You're now just talking to somebody and looking them in the eyes and, and putting your, yourself across. So it's, um, it's, it's very important that you, you keep your personality going. Um, whilst forgetting everything else around you. You've put that in place, it's, it's done. So in summary, um, and I'm hope, I hope that I've got this point across, you know, ultimately you're representing your own brand. When you are virtual, talking to clients, interviewing, 
you are effectively trying to sell your personal brand. So it's really, really important that you present yourself in the best possible way, whether it be through what you're wearing, how you conduct yourself, how you present yourself on the day. Ultimately, when that interview is over, that's the impression that the client will have of you. And that's what they will take away. And that's what they will buy or, or not, as the case may be. Wow, that was interesting for me because I realized how many things I'm doing incorrectly, if you want, or could be doing better. I don't know about you if you felt, you know, I think at one point they mentioned that we shouldn't wear black. And I, I thought that was pretty interesting, pretty yeah. interesting. It depends. It depends on the contrast and color, but I agree. I, I do think you're going to do a much better job with your eyeliner in future. I'm really, I'm grateful for those considerations, but it was, it was interesting because many could argue, ah, why are we doing this now? Why so late in rise? I think, as you said in the introduction, it's important as people go out into the world, we need to make sure that the world we have been visiting through our virtual screens is able to match with the three-dimensional reality of who we are and our personal brands, because there's been a high degree of creative reinvention over these last few months. And ultimately, promise and delivery are absolutely critical. What were the big takeouts for you? So one was this idea, you, you need to still let your personality come out online. And you are, you are excellent at that. In fact, I think your personality online is better than your personality in person. <gasps> Rude. <laughs> I find it a little bit difficult. I think I come across this is what people keep telling me. Why am I so serious? Where in real life, I don't think I'm serious at all. And there is, there's something about staring at the screen, not having the live audience. It's the same thing when I teach not having a live audience when we're teaching online. You don't know if your jokes are working. You don't know if people are engaged. And you have to just have that confidence. And I think um, that's something I, I want to work on a bit more is being a little bit more myself online. And, uh, and you, you, know, you do bring out quite a bit of it. So it's gotten better. But I think that was a key takeaway was the more relaxed you are, the better you are, the more comfortable you are with your screen, with your lighting, with your clothing, all these things, the more relaxed you'll be and the more your personality will come out. And I think that's especially critical when you're applying for a position because you want them to meet the real you, not the online you and not a fake you, but the, the real you that they would meet if it was in person. So if the virtual world has allowed you to be more relaxed online and being the real you, does that mean that you're going to start appearing at EHL in your pajama bottoms when you teach so that you can feel as relaxed as you have online? You clearly don't understand the EHL dress code. This is casual for EHL, so uh, I don't think I'll be in my pajamas anytime soon. There's a second thing I wanted to mention, which was, I think it's related, is the body language issue. I know when I'm filmed teaching live, sometimes for promotional things or TV stations, whatever, my hands are flying all over the place because I get so engaged and so in the moment. We're here sitting at this desk. I don't think we've almost ever seen my hands on rise because it's, it would just be strange to be doing this. And so therefore my personality is not coming out as much because of that. And so I think being conscious of the body language and what you can do and what you can't do, because if I start with my hands around here, I just look like I'm bobbing around. And so I think you do have to make certain adjustments to the way you normally would act without going too far. So that, that was a good point. I hadn't really thought about the fact that I can't move my hands as much, how that you know, calms me down or doesn't make me as engaging perhaps. That's a great point because so much of our communication is the physicality of our body language. And when it's cut off from the neck up, that's, that's a really good point. There were two things I thought was really fabulous. The first one, it's a quote that, it was something that Chantel said, and she said, how you present yourself in real life is how people will take you seriously. And I thought that was really important because we've seen how, with great respect, many people, I'm not referring to you, many people have shown up on screen in professional contexts way too relaxed and just because we're in one another's home does not mean you need to see my laundry basket on the sofa or see private stuff around so as an example when i'm doing filming for anything in the middle east i make sure the wine glasses are off the shelf i make sure that there's a respectful environment for the comfort of my audience not the comfort of me. And I thought she was really good in terms of the respect that's required and recognizing that 
we have to go back in the world and still be professional. So just because we're doing it from a home context and a work from home context doesn't mean get sloppy and by implication get disrespectful. Second thing I found was exactly as you've already referenced, be respectful of who's on the other side of the screen, keeping the eye contact, avoiding being distracted, not getting worried about the fact that there's a fly in the background that's aiming right at you that is wanting to dive bomb Professor Hadari, but respecting the audience and equally how much we talk. I mean, I know you enjoy the mute button and just muting me when you can, but before we close, I wanna make a comment though, because I knew you as a professor three-dimensionally live on the stage. And now we have built this incredible relationship and friendship through RISE the entire year through you putting up with me giving you trouble. And it's interesting, I've always wondered what it'll be like when you go back to classes and your students who've seen you in the more Professor Hadari mode now know that you're also the grouch. And I thought that was really lovely how you've let people in at a comfortable level that still maintains your professionalism, but allows the oddness and the intimacy of this year to make relationships stronger, which they will no doubt a bet, really benefit from and respect. I, I just thought that's an interesting little unusualness of again, 2020, which will strengthen 2021 onwards. And listen, if they know you're a grouch now, then it'll make a lot of things make sense. Yeah, I think they've known that for a while. Uh, I have certain reputation at the school, I think. Um, and it's funny because people think I'm very serious, but then when they get to know me, they realize that I am pretty serious. No, that I'm, <laughs> that I'm not. And, and uh, it's fun. It's fun to it's fun to get to know students. Uh, you, you, could, you know, my assistant, Sarah, will say how scared she was of me in class and how students are always scared. But then once they get to know me, they realize, oh, I'm really just a pushover. And, you know, a, a, a nice guy that you, you maintain certain professor student relationship and you want a certain amount of respect. So, you know, I, I always tell students I'm, I'm not their friend, right? I'm the professor and we become friends after they graduate, but I find if you're too friendly in, in class. And I think trying to be friendly here to the audience is not always that easy because you know, still we're in, you know, still learning how to live online, et cetera. I wanted to say one last thing, the eye contact issue. I just want to admit, I never know where to look at the screen. Either I'm staring right now at the camera and I'm staring just below the camera. Now I actually get to look at you, but now I don't think I'm making eye contact because I'm looking at you in the screen. I don't know how you do it. You always make eye contact. One day I have to come to your apartment and see how you're actually doing this because I don't get it. I work in diplomacy, Demi, and it's uh, all about eye contact that makes people confess. <laughs> okay. So I hope, I hope this was useful for people, even if it's just reconfirming things that you already thought, plus shedding some light on things, or maybe for certain people, uh, some of these issues were, were brand new, uh, maybe had a little bit less experience online. So hopefully it was useful and, um, and a value. And I just really, again, want to thank our, our, our speakers for really spending time and providing this useful advice. Indeed. This is all about building us stronger when we go back into the next normal. Go into the next normal, not back. There is no back. And what's coming up next? Everyone, mark in your schedules. December the 7th, we are going into our next live production. And we're going back to the future. Damien, why don't you tell them what's happening? Yeah, we came up with something pretty interesting, we think. Um, it's been eight months now, almost nine months since the lockdown. And in the first couple of months of RISE, let's say middle of April to the middle of June or so, we had about 10 or 12 executives come on and everybody was really just starting to experience uh, the pandemic and lockdowns and trying to figure things out. And our executives were, were bold enough to share with us their thoughts about what was happening and issues that were being raised, not really forecasting the future, but providing some useful interpretation. So what we've done is we've gone back to many of them and asked them, can you update us on some key issue that you identified on the first time that you were on RISE. Can you update us now? Do you still think the same? Has, has your view changed? Has there been new information that has sharpened your thinking a little bit? So we're going to update you, our audience, on about 10 different um, executives' thoughts from season one of RISE. And let's hear what they have to say. They've all provided us with some new ideas, and we'll be discussing those. And like I said, revisiting what they have to say. Indeed. And I love the fact that we've got such senior leaders being so honest about 
what they now know was incorrect and how the hypothesis we're living has to change. Monday, December 7th, GMT, 12 o'clock, usual time zone shifts for the rest of the world. I look forward to seeing everyone there sitting beside Dr. Hadari and seeing if I can get him to actually finally cry the season. <laughs> but until then, everyone, you know the drill. Stay safe, stay home, stay strong, stay hopeful, keep your hands clean and stay with us on Rise. Over to you for the close, sir. Thanks as always for, for watching and thanks as well for your emails and, and feedback to us. Follow us on LinkedIn, follow us uh, you know, around the block as we go for runs, whatever you want, follow us and stay with Rise and stay well. Mm -hmm.